Hi there. This is Mary Poplin with Boris Effects and welcome to Office Hours. If you're just joining us for Office Hours, these are live and unscripted hours where we ask questions, well, y'all ask questions and I answer them. And today we're going to be going over a little bit of beauty work. We're going to talk about the remove module. We're going to talk about like BCC, well, Continuum's Beauty Studio, which is a lovely bit of software. We'll talk a little bit about rotoscoping and we'll talk a little bit about tracking. And we'll talk about best practices for beauty work as well, because that can be kind of complicated. If you have any questions, ask them in the chat and I will be happy to answer them. And be sure to like and subscribe so that you can catch these. We do these every week at 1 p.m. on Tuesdays. And yeah, we did get bumped last week because we had another competing live stream, but usually it will be 1 p.m. on Tuesdays. So stay tuned and let me show you what we're going to work on today. All right, so this is the shot that we are working on today. It is a lovely woman with a flower and you can see that her flower is actually going over her lips. And what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to handle that flower without having to do a whole ton of rotoscoping because we're going to enhance her lip color, enhance her eye color, enhance her skin tone. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about beauty work best practices. So let's get started. I see that we have some hellos in the chat. Hello. Um, it's good to see you here and stay tuned. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to apply Mocha Pro to this. Now, for those of you that have never used Mocha before, you can either go to Effects and Presets, we're going to use Mocha Pro, or you can go to Effect, excuse me, you can go to Effect, and then you go down to Boris Effects Mocha, and you select Mocha Pro. In this case, we actually already have Mocha Pro applied, because I did a little bit of roto ahead of time, because I don't want you to have to sit through it. Didn't do a lot of roto ahead of time, just the flower. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to launch Mocha. And Mocha will read directly from the timeline in whatever host you're using. It doesn't matter if that's Premiere or if it's After Effects. It doesn't really matter if it's Avid or if it's um, Fusion's effects page. Um, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to get started on this shot. All right. Now, because I have to do a lot of roto in this shot, I went ahead and drew a shape around this flower. Now I do need to adjust this a little bit, but what we did is we tracked using translation only. And so let's pin this flower into the middle of our screen using our favorite tool, the activate quick stabilize mode. Okay. And remember what that does, that will pin your object right here in the middle of the screen. So in this case, we're going to be making a garbage mat around this. And why would I be making a garbage mat around this? I think y'all will remember that we need to be able to hold out shapes. So that's what I'm doing here. We're going to make a quick holdout mat for all these shape, all this, uh, all of this flower inside of the shape, so that when we are tracking beneath it, this flower doesn't get in the way. Now I see a comment here which says, "In the last session, instead of English subtitles, they were in Russian." Um, well, the subtitles I think are automatically generated, so. Um, you can probably adjust that in your settings in YouTube settings as to what your subtitles display as. So keep that in mind as you're watching that you can change the subtitles as we go. All right. And I think they're automatically generated. So I have, I'm dubious about their accuracy. <laughs> All right. So now we have a lovely holdout shape around this flower that we tracked. And let's talk a little bit about how we dive into actually tracking. I'm going to call this flower. And we're going to turn the gear off because that means we're not tracking it anymore. And we're going to turn it off visually because I don't want to look at it anymore. Let's look at what needs to be done to do some simple beauty work on this lovely woman's face. Well, I can see a couple of things. I can see she's got some fine lines right here. And traditionally, we like to minimize those as much as possible. I can see she's also got some fairly deep set eyes. Again, we like to minimize this in beauty work. But we want to make sure when we're doing beauty work, and I really want to stress this because let me just play this so that you can see. When we do beauty work, one of the things that happens is um, a lot of times we overdo it, right? Um, if you look at pop stars, a lot of times in their music videos, beauty work is completely overdone or pushed very, very far. 
And in some looks, that's appropriate. And in some, it's not. I mean, I've seen beauty work where we've taken Lindsay Lohan, for example, and somebody's painted out every single one of her freckles. Those are a part of her face. So we want to make sure that we leave distinguishing marks, but soften or minimize details that maybe the talent wants us to. And a lot of times with beauty work, the the desire for beauty work is actually driven by the talent in your projects. So talent will ask like, hey, can you minimize, you know, um, my chin? Can you take some dark circles out from, from, um, from under my eyes? Can you minimize fine lines and wrinkles and even out skin tone? And yeah, we can do all of those things with beauty work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to enhance her eye color a little bit, darken her lids, lighten under her eyes, soften her skin, and change her lip color a little bit. All right. And we're also going to get rid of this scar on her forehead. Let me zoom in so that you can see. She's got a little bit of an acne scar here on her forehead. Now, fine dots can all be handled with Beauty Studio and they'll be minimized. But something like this scar is actually pretty large. And let's talk about how we would get rid of that. We're going to use the remove tool, but I'm going to show you two ways to get rid of this. All right. So the first way I'm going to show you is the remove tool. So let's come in here and let's draw a shape around this section of her forehead. Notice that I'm not really drawing a shape around her eyebrows or around any part of her face that's super animated. We're keeping this to one plane. If you remember, Mocha is a planar tracker. So let's talk about that. Let's track translation, scale, rotation, shear, and perspective. And notice that I am beginning my track at the end of the shot. So why am I doing that? I'm beginning my shot well, beginning my track at the end of the shot because this is where her forehead is most parallel to camera, largest in frame, and least blurry, okay? And that just happens to be the last frame. It could be the middle of the frame. You don't know. It depends on what her head is doing, okay? Now we're going to go ahead and hit track backwards. We're tracking translation, scale, rotation, shear, and perspective, and I'm leaving it on minimum per percent of pixels used at 90%. We still have our nice activate quick stabilize mode on. And we can also turn our surface tool on to make sure that this track is accurate. If you see your surface tool wobbling, wiggling, jumping, squishing, okay, that's going to be a problem. I see a question here where someone is asking, does this work on black and white footage? Yes, it does. And actually, we have some new tools coming that you'll be excited about as well um, regarding old footage. And that will be in our 2022.5 release. And uh, we'll talk about that in a couple of weeks. Um, so, but yes, this works on black and white footage and yes, this works, um, for any type of grainy footage or even just as long as you have pixels that are shot, it works. Cause that's what Mocha does. It text tracks textures. Um, I see somebody's asking, is the flower in the shot the same from your hair? No, I just like flowers. Um, but it's not the same one for my hair. This is a magnolia, and I think she has a peony, which is a slightly different flower. And I know you're probably just being funny, but they are, they're different. Anyway, doesn't matter. Um, all right, so we're gonna keep tracking this and we're gonna track her forehead. And you can see that it's sticking on really nicely. And that's good because we need that to, to stick on as well as possible. I do also see that I'm probably losing her forehead a bit. So we're gonna stop the track. I'm going to use the pan tool to pan up, which is X on the hot keyboard, or you can select this tool here. And we're going to drag this down just a little bit so that I get a little more texture um, so that as this is tracking off screen, we don't lose our track. And let's continue to hit track backwards. All right. And now this will stick on and I won't get any sort of problem. Now, the only the other reason that I extended the shape is because you could see that was getting more blurry. And we want to make sure we have as much texture to track as possible. If you lose a lot of texture, uh, Mocha doesn't do, do so well anymore because Mocha needs texture to track and it needs single planes to track. If you remember from a lot of our videos uh, that you've watched, Mocha is a planar tracker. It means it tracks one plane at a time. Notice how I just tracked here at once. I didn't track her whole face. And there's a reason for that. I need accurate localized data localized to the plane that I'm trying to follow. And your forehead is not a perfectly flat plane, but it's close enough. Okay. So now what I can do is once this track is complete, I can draw a new shape. So that's what we'll do. We'll take a new shape. I'm going to make a little circle here. And I'm going to draw it right around the little area that I want to replace right here. We're going to call this remove. 
we're going to call this BG forehead. Okay. And we're going to take our flower and drag it in the layer above. It wasn't necessary for this section because we're not tracking anything underneath the flower, but I want to keep the flower as high as possible. We're going to turn the track off for the BG forehead. And for the remove, we're going to select this layer and I'm going to turn off my transform tool and my surface tool. And I'm going to go over here to my layer properties and I'm going to link this to the track. So now I have this linked to BG forehead. All right, and you see that that sticks on pretty well. I do see a little bit of drip. Let's see what we get away with. We're going to clean this up here. There we are. All right, that looks pretty good. All right, so now I have a nice little shape around the scar that I wanna fix. So when we are doing any sort of beauty work, I like to get the biggest part done first. So in this case, the hardest thing to fix is gonna be the scar. So you're gonna do this first and then put everything else that we do on top of this. All right, so this is a typical remove workflow. We're gonna jump over to the remove module, make sure that I've selected my flower and we're gonna jump over here to clean plate clip. In clean plate clip, we're gonna hit create and we're gonna save this right here to our office hours. And we're gonna say, this is clean plate input 274. And notice again that we took it from the area where our object is most parallel to the camera, largest in frame, least blurry, noticing a trend, right? And we're gonna save this, okay? And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna open Photoshop. And in Photoshop, I'm going to go to File, Open, and we're gonna grab this clean plate right here. You just make sure that you navigate to it, all right? And now I can do a couple of things to fix this. I can either do a content-aware fill, or because this is so small, I'm gonna come over here to my tools and I'm going to grab my spot healing brush. And we're just gonna clean that up, just like that. Lovely. All right, so now my scar is gone and I'm going to hit save. All right, and we're just gonna save directly over that clean plate that we just made. So back over in After Effects um, and Mocha. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and say, use clean plates exclusively. Now, why? So if I don't use clean plates exclusively, Mocha's only gonna know that I have a clean plate for that one end and it's not gonna understand that uh, all the rest of the frames are not good reference frames for this remove. Since I don't wanna replace this little scar with more scar, okay, I'm going to use clean plates exclusively so that I say I want to always replace this scar with this clean plate. So let's go ahead and hit render here and just check it. You can see that that looks pretty good. Now I do know that there's lighting change across this whole shot, okay? And I also know that it's complex lighting change. So normally I would say use linear, but here's the problem with linear. We have kind of a gradation across her head. If we use just linear, that entire circle is gonna raise or lower in value based on what's inside the circle. And I mean, what's, what's touching the edge of the circle. And that's a problem because if we raise or lower that value, it's just gonna look like a patch all the way through. So I'm gonna use interpolate. What interpolate does is interpolate looks at all of the pixel change in hue, saturation, and value around the entire shape. And then it does a blend across the shape um, in order to match the lighting as best as it can. So in this way, we're doing a nice, simple, clean plate. So let's hit remove backwards. And you can see that it's starting to adjust for that shape. Now let's jump a little bit further in the shot and see what this looks like, if it's doing a good job or not. And let's turn the overlays off. Still doing a good job. Let's jump over to frame one here. Okay, that looks good to me, all right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna save this and we are going to close it. All right, and now back inside of After Effects, I see somebody asking, would adding a feather to the circle shape help with the linear option? Uh, yes, it would, but depends on how big the patch is, okay? So in this case, we're still gonna add a feather, don't worry. So we're gonna go into module renders and we're gonna to go to our remove and we're going to say render, all right? And now this will render back to our timeline. And yes, I can also go to my mat, I can say apply mat and we can add a feather of like 10 pixels, for example. All right, and now we end up with a nice soft edge. So let's actually make it 15. 
Okay, so now we have this lovely remove and no matter where we go in our timeline, it looks correct. All right. So now that we've got a remove, what do we do here? Well, what I'd like to do is just try to get as much of her skin tone as possible. So let's come over here and let's actually, let's do an adjustment layer. And let's take our adjustment layer and let's go to Beauty Studio. We're gonna take Beauty Studio and drag it onto this adjustment layer. And you can see that Beauty Studio does a lot of work for me, just a ton, okay? So in Beauty Studio, we have a couple of ways to isolate our little skin tone area, okay? Now, because her hair is dark, the background is not the same color as her skin, the flower is not the same color as her skin, Beauty Studio is gonna do a good enough job just actually pulling the colors. So let's pull color A from a highlight. Let's pull color B from a shadow, all right? It does a pretty good job of not, not Beauty Studio-fying her hair, although I still see it, it does it a little bit. So this is really great because now this is a way that we can actually define a, um, a mask inside of Mocha to isolate our Beauty Studio effect. So let's come over here to our Mocha mask and track. And what I'm going to do is, I'm gonna just save this really quick. And let's jump into our original Mocha file here in Mocha Pro. And I'll show you a really cool thing about Mocha Pro um, and other Mocha files. Let's launch Mocha Pro and what it will do is it will load that same Mocha file up. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this forehead shape, okay? And I'm going to make a new shape. We're gonna, actually, let's go, let's just export this project and I'll show you inside of Beauty Studio. Let's export our project to Office Hours. We're gonna call this um, Forehead Track. Okay, and we're gonna go ahead and save that. All right, and now I've exported my Mocha profile. Now in Beauty Studio, I can actually adjust how this is implemented. So we can go to Mocha Mask and Track. And we can go to File, Merge Project. And now what this will do is this will jump over to our project and we can say, hey, merge these. And so now I've got my track right here inside of Beauty Studio. All right, let's go ahead and take our remove shape and delete it. And let's go ahead and take our new X-Blind tool and let's draw a shape right around her face. All right, I'm also going to come in here and I'm gonna use the add to x button and I'm gonna just cut her eyes out of this. And again, we're gonna use add to x and I'm gonna cut her eyes out of this, just like this. And we can also use the add to x shape and kind of cut her mouth out as well. Just like this. All right, and let's call this face rough. All right, and let's link this in our layer properties to our forehead. And now I don't really have to track that again, but I do have to correct it because it looks like we have a little bit of drift here. That's no problem. We'll just correct our shape. And we'll pull our edges out just like this. And what we're doing is we're not having to track this again to get decent roto, which is nice. So here we are, same thing here. Let's correct this mouth shape, which is absolutely out of control. There we are, correct this eye shape as well, just like this, and bring this down and over. All right. And this doesn't have to be perfect, it's just gotta be decent, okay? Same thing again, we've got a little bit too much perspective change happening there. Let's not worry about it and let's just correct it. So when you have a perspective change uh, that's pretty drastic, you can have problems like that. I could also have just gone into the dope sheet and made this translation only, which might've been slightly better, but whatever, we're, we're doing this as we go. These are 
unscripted. All right, so let's move the eye shape just like this. And beauty work is just roto, roto, roto all day long. So much roto, all the roto. All right, so we've got a nice little loose shape right here as well. And you can see that it just does not have to be perfect, okay? But what it does have to be is isolating the areas that we need isolated, all right? But notice I haven't done anything really drastic to these shapes. I'm not really following any edges. I'm not doing anything fancy. All right, perfect. And by perfect, I mean, let's adjust this eye over here. Good gracious. Okay, all right. And the mouth as well. Perfect. All right. So now what we can do is we can say, hey, let's save this. And let's turn our BG forehead off. Save and close. All right, and now do you see it will isolate to my skin tone area around her face. So we can also add another shape for her shoulder and hand if we like, um, and that's really easy. Let's come in here, launch, and I'm actually not even gonna track that. I'm just gonna rough roto it. So we're gonna just grab this shape here, and we're gonna hand animate really quickly. A really, really rough shape because it doesn't have to be perfect. All it has to do is contain the skin tone. Just like that. Okay, see we're breaking the lines right here. No problem. And that's a really quick, what we call a garbage mat. And it really is a garbage mat. So let's hit save and close. And now we've isolated Beauty Studio to her hand and her face and shoulder. And that makes a huge difference. And we can even come in here and start playing with details. So what I really like about Beauty Studio is it does what's called frequency separation. If you've never heard that term before, um, frequency separation is where you look at the various types of details available in the shot and color details, um, and you break them down. And in this case, we have smoothing options to dictate what those frequency separations are. In this case, we have smallest details, small details, medium, and large. Um, I like to take the smooth large details and crank it all the way up to 100, which is already at. What that does is, I'll just show you, let's take this all the way down to zero. Okay, you can see, well, let's take it to zero, not negative 100, um, to zero. And you can see that it doesn't smooth any of these highlights at all. But if we take large details and we smooth them, now we've got that matte finish skin look. But here's the thing we're still keeping her pores because when we go to smallest details, we're not cranking smallest details up to 100. We don't want her to look like Barbie. So we're gonna take this down to 50. What this is gonna do is keep her pores, but it will minimize the look of her pores, okay? Same thing for small details. We want to smooth small details. So like things like these little bumps here, let's crank this up to like 90. All right, and what that does, let's take this down to zero so you can see. If this is at zero, you can see all of these little skin details come back. Let's crank this back up to 90. And now we get rid of a lot of fine lines. We get rid of a lot of little bumps. We get rid of a lot of little pores. Medium details are gonna be mostly lighting details. In this case, let's take it down to zero so you can see what it does. You can see how it's leaving a lot of these details. We wanna crank this back up to 100. Medium details is very nice. Let's come down into our mocha mask and let's actually feather it. So instead of our mocha mask, okay, we're gonna go into our mask here and we're gonna say feather this and feather this like 50 pixels because you can see like a nice hard line there. We don't want a hard line there. We want a soft line, a gentle line that hides any bad roto that we did. So now here's your before. And here's your after 
using Beauty Studio. And that does a lot to minimize fine lines and wrinkles while still keeping her looking very realistic. All right. And we want that realistic look. Um, I don't know if you've watched a lot of uh, some of the Netflix series like uh, Grace and Frankie. Um, Beauty Studio gets used a lot on Grace and Frankie. And it's really a great tool. It allows you to just have really dramatic results with just a couple of button clicks and very little roto. All right. And we like that. We like very little roto. Okay. Especially where this flower is concerned. And we'll talk about how to handle this flower here in a second because it's pretty, pretty, uh, hmm. What's the word I'm looking for? Wavy, right? There's wind blowing, so the petals are blowing everywhere, and I don't want to roto that. I'm sure you don't either. All right, we're going to call this Beauty Studio because that's our Beauty Studio layer. And then we're going to call this our Remove layer. So I like to I like to make sure that I'm naming my layers so that if I have to, you know, hand this shot off to somebody else, it's not a disaster. Also, please save early. Save often. All right. Yeah, <laughs> we love very little roto. No kidding, me too. Now, I, I said that we want to do very little roto, but we are actually going to have to do some roto here because um, I want to change her lip color and I want to change her eyes and I want to change her under eyes. So how do we deal with that? We're going to go back to um, our original plate here and we're going to duplicate it. I'm going to bring this up here. We're going to call this um, fine lines and under eye, okay? So we're going to take this shot and we're going to go ahead and add Mocha back to it. So let's go to Mocha Pro. Here we are right here. Is it sometimes useful to drop the transparency on the adjustment layer? Someone's asking. Yeah, if you think that this is too much, um, sorry, if you think that this effect is too much, you can always come in here and you can take the transparency down or you can adjust it inside of the effect as well. Um, you can mix with original into the in the BCC studio. You can see down here we've got our mix with original. You can always take this value around too, depending on your host. If you're in, in an editing piece of software, that's probably the setting you want to use. If you're using After Effects, then yeah, you can take the opacity down or whatever. Um, you know, there's more than one way to achieve the same effect. All right, so now we've got Mocha Pro. Let's go ahead and launch Mocha Pro. And what we're going to do here is we're going to start tracking her under eye. All right. So zooming in, let's come over here. I'm going to use my add to X blind tools. And we're going to track under her eyes here. And notice I'm making like a nice little shape. Coming over here, we're going to add a new shape right here. I'm getting close to her under eye, and then I'm also getting kind of far away from her uh, face here. Actually, let me delete these real quick. I want to go to the end to do that because when we track, we want to track from areas of the most detail to the least detail, most parallel to the camera to not parallel to the camera. And I was doing that thing where I was just diving in without thinking about where I put my shapes and where you put your shapes is important. All right, let's relax for a curve and relax for a curve. All right, and now I'm going to let these track through. So we're going to call this uh, left eye, and we're going to call this right eye. Um, let's call this under, actually. And let's call this under as well so that I know what I'm doing. All right, now, there we are. Now we're going to adjust our settings here. We're going to say track perspective and track perspective because her head is turning in perspective and we want to make sure that we track that. Um, and I'm going to let that track backwards. And then while we're doing that, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the other things that we can do here. Um, we might want to, well, I told you I wanted to add a darkening color to the top of the eyes so we can add that as well. Um, I don't recommend tracking more than a handful of shapes at a time. If you track too many shapes at a time, not only will it take too long, but you'll actually also have a hard time watching what you're doing. I don't like to track more than two to four shapes at a time because otherwise you can make a mess. Um, that being said, you can track multiple shapes at the same time, which is what I'm showing here. Now, this should be pretty fast. 
because we're not tracking a huge amount of data. If we want it to go faster and I feel like that's going too slow, I can go ahead and take my accuracy down to like 48% of the pixels tracked and that will actually speed up my track a little bit and it will make it less accurate, but these shapes don't need to be super, super accurate. Um, they just don't. So we're gonna let that track and we'll talk about what we're gonna do with this. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm probably gonna end up using this shape to try and adjust um, the under eye with a blur and then a blending mode over the top because Beauty Studio is wonderful and it does a lot, but for getting rid of very large details, um, a lot of times you have to do a lot of blurs and in general, beauty work uses a lot of blurs. It just uses blurred blurs with blending modes so that you don't get overwhelmed by what's happening. So let's go ahead and let this finish tracking. If you have any questions, I want to remind y'all to please ask them in the chat and I will respond. Um, if you're enjoying this, please hit the like button and the subscribe button. We do these every week at about one o'clock on Tuesdays, okay? And these are an opportunity for y'all to interface with me or other product specialists like me using our tools so that you can ask questions in real time and get your answers. Um, please also let me know in the chat if you guys do any sort of beauty work because I'm interested to know um, if you guys are doing these sorts of projects on your own as well and what kind of projects you'd like to see in the future. Please also note that y'all can email me your shots. As long as I can show it on office hours um, and you have permission for that, you can send me your shots and I can work on them in real time and show you exactly what's going wrong with your shot or how to fix it or how to adjust it. So keep that in mind as well because this is a really great resource that we're providing to y'all and we really would like you to take advantage of it. Um, I'm not seeing a lot of activity in the chat, which is totally fine. Um, if you guys, um, if you guys want to see some more um, beauty work, please let me know. All right, let's let this finish tracking and notice that it's not sticking on the edge perfectly. All right. Now, the thing about that not sticking to the edge perfectly thing is we're tracking a plane. Okay, we're not tracking edges. So because we're not tracking edges, what we have to do is we have to do a little bit of hand roto. Um, but because this is Mocha and we're using the Roto based on a track, the nice thing is that we don't actually have to do a ton of Roto. Um, what we can do is we can hand correct based on the track and we cut our keyframes down to about a third of what we'd normally use or more and then cut our Roto time in half. Now, if this model were blinking and I don't think she is, um, I'll scrub through and make sure if this model were, were blinking, I really recommend that for blinks, you hand animate blinks. Don't try to track through them. Um, when a model blinks, it's best to just move the shape up to like an eyebrow or something while she's blinking and then move the shape back down and continue tracking if you're trying to track an upper lid. Um, the reason I say that is because really and truly, a lot of times you're going to end up with a mess if you try to adjust for blinking by hand. Um, I mean, sorry, by um, by auto by auto roto process. OK, you're going to have to do that by hand. All right, we're almost done. All right, I'm seeing that uh, one of uh, let's see in the chat, we're saying we've been working on a VFX artist um, as a VFX artist on some movies in the series and some cleanup work rather than beauty work. Cleanup work and beauty work are really related. A lot of times it's invisible, right? People don't understand what they're looking at, you know, um, a lot of the same principles that I'm showing you here for beauty work um, and removes can be used for things like cleaning up mics out of a scene, cleaning up crew, shadows, objects left on the ground, etc. Um, I see. Uh, yes, you've also had the the sporadic pimple shot. Yeah, I understand those. Everybody's every every production is going to have those from time to time, especially when you consider how much makeup that we have to put on to be on camera, right? If your talent is putting on a ton of makeup, um, they're going to get pimples from time to time just because that's a lot of makeup. All right. Almost done. And let's do some hand correction for this under eye. Now I've tried to keep this as a pretty simple shot because we've only got an hour to go over it. Uh, but I'm going to show you how dramatic of a change you can get in an hour. All right, so let's finish. 
right here. And notice I didn't track this plane and this plane at the same time. A lot of times I do, but if you can see, her cheeks um, are pretty pretty severe. I mean, she's a very lovely person, so that's one of the reasons why her cheeks are pretty severe. Um, because they are, that means that these um, angles are not the same. So a lot of times I'll try to track both sides of the face at the same time. Uh, in this case, I did not, all right? And the reason I didn't is because I did not want to deal with it. All right, let's uh, come over here and adjust this. Here we are. Let's use our pin, our little align. I'm sorry, activate quick stabilize mode, and let's just adjust this roto. And I want to keep it just outside the edge of her eye. She is blinking. Okay, no problem. Let's account for that a little bit. There we are. All right, and let's go again to here. There we go. All right, so that looks nice. Let's check this side. All right, we've got our under eye. Let's adjust this just a little bit under her eye here, just like this. And let's scrub through. All right, let's make a little hand animated keyframe. And there's her blink. Let's work around it because we don't want to blur her eye lids. Here we are. And there we go. All right, so that is a pretty nice little under eye shape. I want to show you one more thing about this. Let's zoom out. With under eyes, I really like to blend it into the cheek below. So let's take our selection tool and let's pick the edge. And I'm going to pick this edge here. I'm going to use the Uber key and watch what's good, what I'm going to do here. I'm going to blend this edge shape out. Now, what is this doing? Let's turn the mat on so you can see. See, it's giving me a feathered edge just like this. So even if I add a little bit of a feather to blend this back into the eye, I've still got this major feather happening on the bottom of the under eye so that we can blend all this back into the cheeks just like this. All right, so now I've used my Uber key, which means this is offset throughout the whole shot. Let's make sure it doesn't break the bridge of her nose there. All right, perfect. And same here, the Uber key has now given me a lovely little feather offset around her little under eye there. So let's hit save and let's hit close. All right, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a mat and we're gonna apply our mat right here, okay? And so you can see that we've got her little under eye right here. So now let's use just a real quick box blur. I like a box blur because it's fast. All right, and let's increase our blur to something like hmm, 15. All right, so now we've got a nice soft blur under her eyes, but that is obviously way too much, okay? Like we're, we're getting into the 80s airbrush look here. We don't want that. So what we can do is we can either use the lighten blending mode, okay, to get rid of her under eye, or we can use the normal blend mode if we wanna get rid of all wrinkles. And we're gonna come in here and we're not gonna get rid of the wrinkles, but we are gonna soften them. Let's take this down to 60%. And so now what we've done so we've really lightened up under her eyes. And I think I am actually going to go to lighten um, because I like the way it keeps the skin tone. All right. So we are still softening that under eye and the cheeks area, and we're making it very luminous. But if you zoom in, because we're using that lighten blending mode as opposed to normal, here's normal. You can see it blows away all these little details. If we come in here to lighten, it only lightens those pixels. So we end up with a nicer blending mode. All right, so let's go ahead and fit this back to our screen. So that's a little bit of an eye lighten up. Maybe I'll take this to 75 actually and really push it so that, because we're online, let's go to 80 actually. There we go. We're streaming this on YouTube. We want you to be able to see the difference. Okay, there we are. So we've lightened up her under eye. And we can do a couple other things with this too. So let's go ahead and um, duplicate this. And we're going to call this Eye Bright. Let's rename this to Eye Bright. All right, I'm going to go ahead and take my blur off and let's launch Mocha one more time. All right, 
So it's going to launch. I like to do this in layers. Everything has to be a different layer. This is why I recommend doing this style of beauty work inside of a compositing tool. Because if you don't, you're going to end up with a bit of a problem. All right, so let's say I want to brighten up her eyes a little bit. Let's come in here. Let's make a new X-spline shape for her eye. And let's just come right inside of her eye, just like this. We'll relax for a curve. And again, we're going to come right inside of her eye, just like this. Okay, notice we're not going to the edges. We're not doing anything fancy. We're just making a little inner eye shape. We're going to call this left eye bright, and we're going to call this right eye bright. And because we tracked the under eye already, we're going to go to left eye bright, and we're going to link it to the track that says left eye under. And we're going to take right eye bright, and we're going to link that to right eye under. Okay. And so what that will do is that will, once again, make it to where we don't have to track. So let's, again, use our activate quick stabilize mode. And let's just hand animate this a little bit just to make sure that we end up with her whole eye. All right, and then let's, there we are. Let's animate all the way to the end and I'm gonna worry about that blink in just a second. But we're gonna animate everything correctly first. All right, pulling this here, there we are. Okay. All right, so that's right before the blink. So we're gonna just very quickly take this all the way down. Hand animation is the key for blinks. You can still, we still got a little bit there. And then what we're gonna do for this, it's totally shut. So we're gonna take this shape, animate it off the screen for a second, Go one more and animate it back. So you see what we did there is we moved our shape off the screen. Okay. And the reason we did that is because we want to make sure that when we do this eye bright, that we are not, we're not taking our blink and um, making her eyes bright where her eyelashes are, right? Because you don't want her eyes bright where her eyelashes are. That doesn't make a lot of sense. All right. So now let's see what we have. Let's extend this out. There we are. All right. And we'll just make this a little bit bigger because this is right right before the blink. And you can see that we're kind of, we're avoiding her eyelash, but we're getting her iris. All right. So now we've got a lovely little blink. And we're going to worry about the same thing over here for this eye. We're going to hand animate this. All right. So there's the eye at the, at the end. Here's the eye at the beginning. We're going to come over here, adjust this shape just like this. With eyes, I really like to make a beginning shape and an end shape and then come in and correct them. And that's because they usually don't change a crazy amount, um, except for slowly over time. So here we are. Going to do the same thing. Just like this. And we just don't worry about what that eyelid is doing too much. And we don't want to make these eyes too bright or too different. Okay, so that is closed and this is open again. So let's just quickly animate this back up. Here we are. All right, and we're going to hand animate that close again um, because that's just how we do. Let me check on time real quick. Okay, good. we're good on time. All right, so there's closed. And there's open. So let's start hand animating this eye closed, just like this. All right. And we're almost there. Almost to where we have to start moving this off screen. All 
All right. I'm calling that off screen. All right, so let's zoom out. Take this eye, move it off screen. And let's move it back on screen right here. All right, there we go. So now we've got that nice eye closed and rotoed. All right, so let's take these two shapes and let's go ahead and save and close. And I've already applied my mat, okay? We're gonna do a feather of like five pixels. Okay, and let's check our visible layers and make sure that our eyes are visible and no other layers are. So we've got left eye and right eye bright. Okay, and I didn't delete those layers because I had linked the track to those layers and that's important, okay? So we're gonna take this and we're gonna just come over here and we're gonna do like a levels really quick. Let's do a levels. Here we are. All right, so now we've brightened her eyes up, excuse me. We've brightened her eyes up quite a bit. So here's, here's her levels off. Here's her levels on. All right, and we can even adjust the hue of her eyes, right, with the levels a little bit, because we're bringing, well, it's not the hue, it's the levels, but anyway, we're taking the darks dark and the lights light, and that is dramatic, all right? It's probably tr too dramatic, but we're gonna leave it this dramatic for right now, okay? Now, the next and last thing I want to do for her eyes is I want to touch on um, that, that little top area for eyeshadow here. So we're going to really just cheat that, okay? We're going to take our eye bright layer and we're going to duplicate it. We're going to call this eyeshadow, okay? We're going to take our levels and delete them. We're just, we're just going in a little order here. Um, so let's come over here to our highlight just like this, a little highlight layer. So this is now eyeshadow. Okay, we're gonna take our left and right eyes and delete them. I'm gonna take my under eyes here and let's just make sure they're still hidden. I'm gonna zoom in and we're gonna make a nice shape right here. All right, we're gonna relax for a curve, pull tight for one little corner right here. Okay, and we're gonna make sure that this is right around her eye. And notice that we're keeping to her brow line, right? And her eye ridge, right? This, this um, ocular bone, okay? We're, this is makeup tips from Mary Poplin. You wanna make sure that you highlight and low light the creases. So low light the creases, highlight that brow bone, right? Um, or ocular bone. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and do the same thing to the side as well. All right. Tune in for more makeup tips from Mary Poplin. All right, so now we've got this lovely little shape. We're gonna call this left shadow and we're gonna call this right shadow. Okay, and what we can do is we can do a couple of things. Um, we can link this once again to the right eye under and we can link this to left eye under, right, as usual. Um, and now we're doing as much as possible to try to minimize our roto work. Minimize the roto work. All right. This looks pretty good over here still. All right. Let's make sure. All right. We're almost losing it. So let's, um, let's come here a little bit and make our little animated shapes here. Cause once again, we want to make sure that we account for that, that little blink. There we are. Same thing for the other eye. Let's account for that blink. Fun fact, did you know that people do not blink their eyes at exactly the same time? Usually there's an offset. So when you are animating eyes, you can't always count on it being on the exact same frames. Um, usually people blink one eye before they blink the other. Uh, in this case, she's blinking them 
fairly at the same time. But if you look, if you watch like Disney films, a lot of animators know that. Um, and so what they'll do is they'll have one eye blink noticeably before the other because otherwise it triggers that uncanny valley thing in your brain where you're like, that doesn't look real. But, uh, but that is a weird and interesting thing about animating eyes. All right, let's just make sure that we adjust the shape over here just like this. Simple, simple, simple roto. The most simple roto. All right, and we'll just pull this in as well right here. All right, looks like, looks like the other eye looks pretty good. Okay. That, that moment when you hesitate to add a keyframe, but always add it to be safe. Yes, absolutely. We do a lot of that. Um, all right. So what I can do is I can do a couple of things here. I can save and close this. All right. And I can either take my levels, okay, and I can crank up the darkness, you know, turn up the darkness just like this. And crank up some of the highlights. So here's our, our eyeshadow change. Excuse me. Let's go to matte. Let's apply matte. Let's check our visible layers. Yeah, good. All right. So here's our, our matte for our eyeshadow. So we can either crank up those levels just like that, or what we can do, I need you to update. Do I have caps lock on? All right. Or we can come in here. Oh, it's on lighten. That's why. Caps lock off. All right, let's go to normal. All right, so I can either crank those up to a ridiculous value that doesn't make sense at all. Um, there we go. We can crank this up or let's take this down into darkness. That's way too dark. Okay. Here we are. So we can either adjust using the levels or what we can do is we can come in here to our mask. Uh, let's do a feather of like 30. Okay. And that blends this nice soft edges. And what we can do is we can come in here to multiply. Okay. And we can darken that way. And what that will do is that will take our values, right? And it will multiply them. I'm going to take our effects and I'm going to take this down to about 40%. Excuse me, we're on, I was on the wrong layer there. We want to go to eyeshadow, take that down to about 40%. All right, perfect. So now we have darkened her eyelids for that lovely eyeshadow look, just like that. All right, so now let's play this and see what we got. Pretty dramatic change. In fact, let's, uh, Duplicate our original plate, drag it above. So here's the original, and there's the change. So that's a pretty dramatic change, all right? Um, I wanna talk about one thing really quick. Uh, I wanna take her little lip shape and I wanna adjust her lip color, uh, and I wanna show you something really quickly uh, with that. So let's, um, let's go ahead and call this Let's duplicate this layer, bring it here. Let's call this lips. Okay, and I wanna show you how to deal with that rose over the top. We might run a little long, but hopefully we won't run very long. Um, let's go to Mocha. Let's drag and drop Mocha Pro right onto our lips here. Um, let's go to File, I'm sorry, let's go to Launch Mocha. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna merge that project that we did previously. So, Hit start. Let's go to file, merge project, and let's go to desktop, office hours, 10, forehead track. Here we go. All right, I'm going to take this forehead track. I'm going to go into the dope sheet real quick, and I'm going to go into the track here, and I'm probably just going to go ahead and delete our shear and perspective keyframes, just like this. We're going to just make sure they're all gone. Delete. This is me adjusting my tracking data because I don't want to track this again. And I do just want that translation 
scale and rotation data, but I don't want shear and perspective. So we're going to get rid of all of my shear and perspective keyframes, just like this, really quickly, so that I don't have to retract that. All right, so now we're going to go back to parameters, and we'll have a, a shape that kind of sticks with the head, but you know, doesn't do a whole lot of Z space shifting. Okay, no problem. Turn that off. Take our little round shape here, and let's add just a real quick, quick rough shape right around the lips, just like this. Okay, and let's call this lips. Oh, I took scale as well. That's okay. Um, let's go and link that to BG forehead. All right, and now we're just going to hand animate a quick little. Quick little lip shape, just like this. Here we are. This is very, 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 very basic. All right. Here we are. I just don't want to, don't want to make you sit through too much more roto. We could also do this with power mesh. This is actually a pretty good candidate for power mesh, but that's okay. Even though it's shiny. We can just use automatic and look for the best details. Okay. Here we are. All right. So that's a nice rough lip shape. We're going to save this. We're going to close it. Okay. And we can do a couple of different things on this. Um, we could either use levels or we could use a color replace. I want to say there's a tint. Um, like S tint, I think is a pretty good one for this. Let me see. Yes. I've got a beta on Sapphire. Okay. Let's actually, let's save and make sure that we're not going to um, change that. All right. So let's take our tint. I'm not going to use this tint. I'm going to use, let's just use hue and saturation real quick. And let's saturate those lips a little bit. Okay, and let's in our mocha mat, let's apply our mat. Okay, and let's use a feather of like 50, something ridiculous. Okay, so now we've, we're just, we're just highlighting the area around her lips to be saturated. All right. Now, the problem with that is when this flower crosses her face, we're going to end up probably saturating this flower edge a little bit. and It's going to look a little weird. Okay. So we don't want to do that. I, I will show you how to put this flower back on top. So let's go to our original project. I want to put this flower on top too, because you can see that Beauty Studio is affecting the flower as well. And we want the flower back on top. So let's take our remove file that we had, jump it up here. Let's rename this to flower. Okay. Excuse me. Okay, now we're going to launch Mocha. And I want to delete the other layers that aren't the flower, just for sanity's sake. All right. Delete. All right. Save. Let's turn it on so we can see it. Yep. Save and close. All right. So if excuse me, we've got our flower right on top here. Um, and we've got let's do a feather of zero. Um, and let's do apply mat. Perfect. All right. Now the problem with that is we'll end up with a hard edge. I don't want that hard edge. So let's go here to uh, hue and saturation. Actually, let's take hue and saturation, take the master saturation down to zero. Okay. So I'm not doing it. Are you doing it and I'm not seeing it? Let's go to Mega Pro Flower. Oh, let's take our remove module off. Module renders? No. There we go. All right. So now we've got our visible layers. Flower. Got it. All right. Hue and saturation. Take that all the way down. Perfect. All right. Now let's come over here to levels. All right, we're going to take our levels. You can see what I'm doing here. I'm going to crank this black up. 
okay, until we get rid of that skin tone. All right, and then I'm going to take the white. We're doing just a very basic Luma key here. We're only ca catching the highlight edges, but that's okay. That's what we need. All right. So now we've got all of that animating feathery flower. Okay. So let's duplicate this. All right. And here's our original layer. Let's go ahead and take our hue and saturation and levels off. All right. And so now we're going to use this as a luma mat. And so now my flower edges come right back over the top. Exactly. I'm creating a luma mat. Um, all right. So that is our beauty studio. I'm going to go ahead and take lips down to something that is reasonable because that's a lot. Let's take it down to 50 and I'm going to take my eye bright and I'm going to take that down to like, mm, let's do 70. Uh, maybe even let's do 60. You don't want to overdo it. Okay. So now let's take our original plate, move it to the top. Let's go to before. All right. So let's see the dramatic before and after. So here is the before. All right. And here is our beautiful after. All right. So we've done quite a bit of work to this shot. All right, guys, that is beauty work with Mocha Pro and Continuum's Beauty Studio and lots and lots and lots of Roto. So We'll be doing these every single Tuesday at 1 p.m. We hope you join us. If you liked this, please like and subscribe. Um, we really appreciate the comments today. If you have any more questions or if you have something you want to see specifically, please email me and we can go over more of these in the future. Um, if you're having trouble with a shot, go ahead and email me at maryp at borisfx.com and I'll be happy to use it on the next office hours as long as the footage is able to be reshown live. So thank you so much for joining us. We hope you have a wonderful day. And once again, let us know if you have any questions in the future. Bye.